Let's podcast. Who's that watching through your window? It's daily solutions. Oh no, where did he go? Now he's standing behind you. He really wants you to listen to his show. Let's podcast. Hey everybody! All right, another day, another podcast. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> really, actually, have a have a slogan now, huh? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm Graham. I'm Ashcon. And today's question is: <laughs> I'm buying an existing float tank. Man, a lot of purchasing float tank questions. Coming if we recently, what? yeah, Re- yeah, recently. <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm buying an existing float tank center. Uh-huh. Do I still need to have a business plan? Hmm. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you should definitely purchase one from some sort of reputable float tank business plan company. You know, I would say <laughs> that would be my advice. Not all business plans are made equal. Okay, <laughs> there's really only one I think that would be justified. Yeah, there's only one that's made to equal purchase. to itself. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's ours. Um. Well, okay, so there's two ways to look at this, right? There's, or I guess there's, there's just different levels of business plan and business planning. Like, and you didn't capitalize yours. So you obviously mean lowercase business plan. Um, <laughs> the informal. Yeah, but like, should you have a plan of how you're going to run your business and staff it and market and make a profit and all those kinds of technical details? Absolutely. I mean, you need them. You're, <laughs> you're about to run a business, you know? You should have a plan. Yeah. So in that sense, you need a plan. For your business. In the other sense, like, do you need a robust business plan, 30 page written business plan and five years of projected financials and kind of this more robust capital BP <laughs> business plan? I mean, only if you're financing the purchase of your float center, really? Yeah, right? In that, in that yeah. sense, it's, it's the same way as if you were building this from scratch, which is, you know, it's going to cost money to purchase and you can often get loans or investment for a purchase of something as well, just like you can for, for building it out. So if you're doing that, then you probably need to have about the same diligence with your business planning that you would if you were if you were starting from scratch. And I guess the nice thing is some of those numbers can be filled in with the business that you're taking over, you know, they rather than needing to make projections for what your first year is going to be when you're drawing on a totally blank canvas. You have someone to give those to you, and, and as far as things that market and, and what their usual customers are that are coming in, you know, a lot of these things that are guesses before you're getting into a new business are solid and, and again, should be provided in a really nice form by the people you're, you're purchasing this thing from. So it'll, it'll certainly make the planning easier. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of times people are making business plans to go to a bank or, or investors or something like that and finance the startup cost. And if you are needing to finance the purchase of another float center, they might ask you for a business plan in that context too. Yeah, they, yeah, they likely it's, will. It's just going to be a different sort of beast in either way, right? Like you, when you're writing a business plan to get a loan to start up a float tank center, you're talking about like, here's the type of space I'm going to be looking for. Here's why I think this neighborhood will be good. You know, you're making a lot of projections about why you think this area would enjoy a float center and there, there's just so much more kind of intangible stuff going on there than if you're purchasing an existing business that has already a track record of how many customers are coming in. Like the bank's probably going to want to know, how, what are you going to do to improve these numbers or get this profitability yeah. higher? Or you know, or the, why, why is buying a float tank center here especially yeah. valuable? Why are know? they selling it? That, that it, Why is it even up for sale in the first place? You know, th- those are the sorts of questions. And if you're financing it yourself... You know, this could be a lot more casual. Like, you may just like have that information from the float center you're buying it from, and and even maybe have like operational information. And I was going to say an operations you're... guide in that case is almost more what you're. Well, I don't know. Like, but there's still the whole marketing side of things, and how are you going to make this viable? And like in that yeah. sense, all, all the yeah, it it is more operational. It's kind of like a logistical business plan of of how are you going to do this. And and rough costs, right? Like roughly, what are my utility costs going to be per month? And hopefully, like Ashkan was saying, that's provided by the center you're purchasing. And a lot of those variables will be stable. And you still need to figure out what the heck you're going to do when you <laughs> take over these keys and grab your center, right? And that's going to exist right. no matter what. But yeah, I mean, in, in, with the capital BP, yeah. like I wouldn't like if you if the center has finances you can look at and and but, the basics of running if they're place, not going for a loan and they're not going for the loan like if some of that stuff's already there like I would be pretty I wouldn't be tempted to sit down and write like a formal 50 page 
business plan. I'm pretty anti business plan, except for the purpose of of raising money. Uh-huh. You know, I think a lot of that time that you're going into detailed financial projections for five years could be better spent on a little more day to day kind of world. things. Yeah, so I think we're on the exact same same page for that. So again, the the answer is maybe. Um, for whether or not you need a business plan, but you definitely need some like a, a firm sense of operations and an operational plan for what you're going to start instituting right when you take over. Yeah, especially because you're you're you know flying a plane mid-flight at that point. Like <laughs> the, the thing's got to keep running from when yeah. you take it over. You been you maybe you've never been a pilot before, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> maybe the wing's a little broken. <laughs> All right, well, you know, go dream about that for a while and. <laughs> If you have any other questions, go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast. Yeah, you can type those in letter by letter. Yep, and the little uh, typewriter that we placed behind our eyeballs, we'll type them into our brain in sync. Uh-huh. Weird. I'm going to think about that now. <laughs> type that in. can't get that out of my head. All right. <laughs> Bye, Talk everyone. to you guys later.